Good night. Good afternoon to everybody. It's a matter of great honor for me to have been invited by this esteemed college to be the chief guest and also to deliver a keynote speech on the subject Emerging Trends in IFRS as relevant to Indian conditions. Before I begin, I must say a th few things. First, I must compliment Mr. S. J. Gurk, the Honorable Principal, Dr. Mrs. N. C. Joss, who has been very kind to give me this opportunity, Dr. P. S. Rao, who initiated and suggested my name and because of whom I accepted the invitation to come here. Dr. Varsha Anekure, who contacted me and has been in touch with me for all through. Dr. Elizabeth Gordon, distinguished members of the audience, guests, delegates and young friends. I must say I was amazed when I came to this college. I must compliment the Gwandi body and Dr. Jose for really carrying out a great service to the nation in terms of educating more than 8,000 students in different disciplines. <laughs> I have also learned that the college is doing very, very well and it is recognized as one of the best colleges of Mumbai University. <clears throat> is holding seminars and conferences to motivate and inspire people so that they can conduct research and progress further. And it is really happening to lot to see the laurels in the form of shields which are there in the office of the principal of the college. Dr. Varsha, I was surprised to know she has written so much of work, about 14 books and large number of articles. And as a matter of fact, she is probably the right person to have delivered a keynote speech on IFRS because she did her PhD on the subject rather than me. However, this honor has been given to me and therefore I am here before you. Dr. Rao, a distinguished academy, a man who is an icon himself and has his institute has done extremely well in the country. Friends, coming to the subject, I must say, Dr. Elizabeth's work or presentation, which was very well done, very comprehensive, and also, which has made my job very easy, but at the same time, very difficult. Easy because she has her, her presentation, which is so beautiful, has been very comprehensive, covered almost all aspects of IFRS. And difficult because I have different kind of views on the subject. And therefore, I need to really digress from that point of view. First of all, I must say, friends, that IFRS, the questions, there are four questions which arise. What is IFRS? Why do we need IFRS? The third, how do we implement IFRS? For whom it is to be implemented at all? Of course, the first three questions have been very well answered. Even the fourth one, for whom, has already been presented by Dr. Elizabeth, and therefore I said my job has become much easier. But then where is it difficult? You will shortly see. In any given situations, there are few views. First is your view. The view which IFRS has put across, which has been adopted by more than 90% countries of the world, the almost whole of the European Union, but not by United States of America and formally not by India. And therefore, we being in India, need to be more concerned about the question whether or not we need to adopt IFRS in its own format. 
The another important thing in this collection, yes, the, the first view is your view, the view which is presented by IRFS. The second view is my view, the view which probably India presents or the view which any analytical person would probably put across before the audience with regard to any financial disclosures or this financial reporting system, whether it is under IFRS, USGAP or Indian accounting standards. The question is whether or not they have served a useful purpose, whether it was previously the way it was done or whether after adopting IFRS, which was introduced as far back as 1973 and or GAAP or Indian accounting standards. The third thing is when we say two views, there is third view which is called truth. What is truth in the whole reporting system? To what extent the report, financial reporting system holds the truth which really stakeholders desire? Because that truth is that there in, a, in, in any reporting system or is that missing? That would be really a very important question. And the last view is no view at all. There are people, if you really ask them a question, do you want IFRS, you want GAP, you want Indian accounting standard? They say, I don't know all this. I know the way I am presenting, it should be presented the same way. So I have no views on the subject. I think these four views, we need to really analyze and look at IFRS from that point of view. Friends, in this connection, I must say, we can divide all analysis into three components. One is a radical, liberal, non-conformist. The second is conformist. The third, which I must say, the truth. What Dr. Elizabeth presented is conformist view and not non-conformist view. And also, I must say, with due apology, not the truth of existence in, in terms of financial disclosures. She has rightly said managers do not want to reveal everything. As a matter of fact, nobody can either reveal nor can ever reveal everything which probably stakeholders desire. And lastly, one should not reveal everything because there is a danger of revealing everything in terms of financial reporting from the point of view of uh, stakeholders, from the point of view of competitors, from the point of view of employees and trade unions, from the point of view of the state who is always interested to squeeze as much as possible in the form of taxes and so on and so forth. Similarly, one, it cannot be presented. One, one does not want to present. One cannot present. And thirdly, it should not be presented. I think these are very important aspects which need to be considered when we talk about any financial reporting system. Now friends, coming to this point, it is always, as I said, attempt of the government that corporations, companies, organizations, employees and individuals disclose everything possible in terms of incomes, in terms of expenditures, in terms of their assets and in terms of, in, in, in terms of their liabilities. They also want how is it being done and therefore those methods need to be disclosed either in the form of accounting policies or in terms of the director's report or in terms of notes to accounts and so on and so forth. Friends, I will shortly come to set some of these aspects in, in this case. My dilemma is which view should I present first? The conformist, the radical or non-conformist and the last, the truth. Let me begin with starting fast, at a fast speed, some of these slides which I have brought with me and then come to the second view, that is the non-conformist view.
This is the reason of IFRS. I don't need to read it. Dr. Elizabeth has done very, very well about that. Transparency, accountability, comparativeness, all these are important. Now, but whose point of view? India is a country of 1.25 billion people. There are a large number of companies who have no international trade, no international business, no direct bond investment, no dealings internationally. Why should they adopt IFRS? That is my simple question. I think I will raise probably a number of other questions as well. Of course, those companies who have international relations, who are looking for foreign direct investment, those who are looking for raising funds in America, or Eurozone or anywhere else in the world, probably they need to really conform to what is international financial reporting system. Coming to the next is, it is to develop this. Transparency, accountability for the stakeholders, creditors, public investors, banks, financial institutions. And of course, it is adopted by as many as 138 countries, with a consist of 97% of the GDP, has support of foreign investment in US stocks, with US $14 trillion, and US investment in foreign stocks, US $9 trillion, worldwide FDI flows of US dollar, $1,238 trillion, $1.238 trillion, OECD estimates. And therefore, that means we need to really conform to IFRS. Vision of global accounting standards is needed by integrated financial markets. The second which is needed by promote, to promote gross border investments, lower cost of capital, transparency, accountability and efficiency, and lastly, reliability, but I must say, in, in, in the international arena. IFRS is developed by IASB, established 2001, successor International Accounting Standards Committee, and set international accounting standards since 1973. It is a globally recognized set of standards for the preparation of financial statements by business entities. Those standards describe the items that should be recognized as assets, liabilities, incomes and expenses. How to measure these items, how to present them in the set of financial statements and related disclosures about those items. I will shortly come to how all this has been misused by companies almost ever since whether they have been adopting account, generally accounting principles for disclosure or IFRS or GAAP and we will shortly come to those aspects when I talk to you about the non-conforming part of the views. Well, there are conceptual framework that involves international financial reporting standards from 1 to 15, international accounting standards from 1 to 41, interpretations of IFRS and IFRIC 1 to 21 and SIC 7 to 32, IFRS for small and medium enterprises. Well, there are several jurisdictions, I don't need to really go into that, keeping in view the shortage of time. Now we will come to India and reporting system. Listed companies and financial institutions, SEBI require them to file consolidated financial statements. Accounting standards developed by the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India and approved by the central government. Option to listed companies to adopt IFRS as per IASB 11 companies presently report with IFRS. Listed companies and well there are two 
phases. They are to be implemented for April 2016 and with a net worth of above Indian rupees 5 billion, that is US dollar 83 million. April 17, phase 2, all listed companies and non-listed companies with net worth above Indian rupees 2.5 billion US dollar 42 million have to implement. Implementation of Indian accounting standards for banking and non-bank banking financial institutions by 2018-19 onwards as per the order of the RBI. In IRDA would issue order for adoption of IFRS for insurance companies with IASP issues new standards for insurance contracts. Voluntary disclosure is of course permitted. Well, there are competitions which I have tried to draw between, on the various topics, between the account, Indian accounting standards, that is, and IFRS and the Indian GAAP. These are various accounting standards which probably can be looked at with regard to financial presentation of financial statements, inventory primary literature, standards, statement of cash flows, and so on and so forth. 